Hey everyone, Isaac CryptoWick here from the Profit Farmers Crew. So in today's video, I'm going to walk you through our trading signal results for the month of June, talk a little bit about the major headlines that have reached the news this month, and also introduce you guys to the new family of trading signal strategies that we've just released on the Profit Farmers dashboard. So let's jump right into our trading signal results. June's been kind of a wild month, as all of you guys are probably well aware. And during this month, we've completed 41 trading signals. 10 of those were for the spot markets and 31 of those were for the futures markets. So out of those 41 completed signals, 35 of them went on to win and only six of them went on to lose. Broken up into spot and futures, seven of those were spot trades that won and 28 of those winning trades were futures trades. And for the losing trades, it was an equal 50-50 split. So three for spot and three for futures that lost. Cool. So moving down, let's look at the winners versus losers in more detail. A whopping 85% of our signals overall hit at least their first of four take profit targets, and only 15% went on to directly hit stop loss. Broken down into spot and futures, 70% of our spot signals went on to hit at least one of the four take profit targets. And for futures, a crazy 90% of our future signals hit at least one of their four take profit targets. And to cover break-even trades, and in case you guys aren't aware, a break-even trade is when we issue a close early notification for a specific signal simply because we don't like the look of this one, let's play it safe and get out of the trade early. So for spot, we had seven break-even trades and futures, we had eight break-even trades for a total of 15. Now for the final target hit percentage spread, now this is telling us out of all the signals produced, how many of them hit target one, two, three, or four, or went directly to hit stop loss. So we had 31% of our signals for a total of 13 hit their first take profit target, and then we had 14.6% hit their second take profit target, 17% hit target three, and almost 22% went on to hit target four. And for the stop loss, around 15%, as we looked at earlier, went directly to stop loss. So we've also broken down the final target percentage hit spread for spot and futures trades. But for the sake of time, I'm going to skip over that. If you'd like to look at these in your own time at your own pace, please feel free to just download a copy of this PDF using the link below this video. Okay, so before we move on, I would just like to point out that 54% of our signals went on to hit their second, third or fourth take profit targets. And that's pretty awesome, especially considering how much of a bloody red charted month June has been. Now we get to the average gains per target. And this is pretty interesting because if you remember further up, we had 85% of our signals overall hitting at least their first take profit target. So what does it actually mean in terms of gains? And that's what this part here tells us is the average peak gain for target one of all of our signals combined was 10%. So that means 85% of our signals produced made an average peak gain of at least 10%. Think about that for a second. I don't mean to beat the dead horse with a stick here, but this was during a month that was catastrophic for so many traders, and we were still able to produce these kinds of profitable opportunities. So for target two, we had 13% peak gains. For target three, we had 17.8, almost 18% peak gains. And target four, 23.5% peak gains. And stop loss had an average loss of 7.2%. Again, we've broken this down between spot and futures, but if you want to look at that, I suggest you just download the PDF. Cool, so now we get to the average depth of the entry zone. So for those of you who don't know, this is telling us how far into the entry zone the price went or dipped, hence the chart that you can see here, before going up to hit one of its take profit targets. So overall, for all of the spot and future signals combined, it went down an average of 50% into the entry zone. And again, we have it split between spot and futures. So for the spot market, it's 61% almost, and for futures, it's 45%. And now we get to the top 10 trades. So coming in at number one is Luna USDT. This was a spot signal, almost a 38% gain in four days. And then coming in at second was Data BTC, 28.3%, and MTL USDT coming in at 27% peak gains. And that happened in the span of just 16 hours. So that was quite a quick one. And again, we have it split up between spot and futures. So the winning signal for futures was the MTL USDT trade that happened in 16 hours and made a peak gain of 26.9%. 
All right, so that's it now for our trading signal results for the month of June. But before we get into the news headlines, let's do a quick recap of what's happened during 2021 so far. So if you've been following the crypto markets for the past year, you would know that the beginning of the year was a state of euphoria for everyone. Everyone who traded crypto was a genius, everyone was making money, uh, and also uh, many scams were coming out, and still are coming out actually. But then we had Elon Musk announce how he's no longer interested in Bitcoin because of how energy intensive mining operations are, which turned out to be nonsense. Uh, but that caused Bitcoin to stumble dramatically, uh, to drop very, very steeply from $60,000 down to $30,000. And since then, the narratives have been pretty mixed. We've had some people saying that, oh, it's going to be a bull run, and other news outlets saying, oh, it's going to be bearish, there's this, there's that, there's whatever. So now let's dive into the top three news headlines for the month of June. And the first honorable mention has to go to Binance being banned in the UK and all this nonsense that's been going on around that. Um, if you just have a look at some of the headlines, it's very understandable why people are so afraid and, and freaked out and concerned about this because the way all these news headlines are reading is if Bitcoin and sorry, is if Binance is just being completely shut down in the UK for good. And that's quite peculiar. If you ask me, I would say that some interested parties creating some FUD, some fear, uncertainty and doubt to dump the markets and make some money off their short positions. Um, and call me a conspiracy theorist, but that's just my opinion. Because if you look at all of these news headlines, which all interestingly came out in very similar time periods, so these all came out a week ago, these all came out just a day ago, they all say very similar things. They're all saying how Britain has banned Binance, Britain has stopped allowing this, and, have, and how Barclays has banned this. And if you actually read the articles about what happened with Binance in the UK, all it is is Binance is not allowed to offer regulated services such as buying tokenized stocks, tokenized securities, and other sort of things like that. But cryptocurrency, which is unregulated and remains unregulated, is still allowed within the UK. Meaning people who are trading on Binance in the UK can still trade on Binance as they would have done in the first place. For those of you who are concerned, take this as a call to action, like stand up, go to your democratic leaders, you know, message your MP on social media, whatever, text them, say, hey, we don't like what's going on here. Can you raise this issue publicly? Like we don't want to be babied around by our government. We don't want to have our government able to dictate what we do with our own money. Anyway, I won't rant on too much. And let's move on to the next piece of news, which is, of course, China banning Bitcoin again. Here we are. Yep. For the hundredth time, China has banned Bitcoin. So what is it about this time? Well, they've actually banned crypto mining, which is a pretty big deal when you consider that around 65 to 75 percent of all Bitcoin mining facilities were based in one of four states that I won't try to pronounce in China. So, of course, this is a little bit disconcerting, but again, it's not really the first time that China's tried to ban cryptocurrencies or has banned cryptocurrencies. And this is simply because of the recent hype that's attracted too many Chinese investors to start trading in the speculative cryptocurrency markets. Uh -huh. Is this a bad thing for cryptocurrency in the long run? I don't really think so. With many of these mining operations being run out to places like Texas or other close regions, this really does open up a new era for Bitcoin to be more decentralized than ever before. So I think that's pretty cool, actually. That's some good news coming out of that. And then finally, we have some good news. El Salvador has accepted Bitcoin as legal tender, and that's fantastic in my opinion. So to give you guys a little bit of a background, El Salvador's economy has been collapsing for a while now. It's been experiencing periods of extreme inflation, um, that's been due to bad government spending, bad regulations, and Bitcoin offers an opportunity to solve that issue. And that's what El Salvador has done. The government has gone and now made Bitcoin legal tender, which is pretty crazy, actually. This is pretty cool, because if you look at pictures like this, it's quite crazy to think that places in El Salvador that you know really do look like this will be accepting Bitcoin as legal tender. I think it's pretty great, you know, for a country like El Salvador that's had a struggling economy for some time now, um, this could be a great way to resurrect these issues that they've had going on. So there you have it. Those are the top three news pieces for this month, for the month of June. And, you know, the question on everyone's mind is, is this going to be make or break? Is it going to be Bitcoin bull or bear? And honestly, the answer is only history will tell. We don't know. Um, we've seen these kind of events play out many times before in the past. Sometimes it can be good. Sometimes it can be bad. It really depends how, I guess, the news picks it up and wants to twist it 
or how the market and people as, as a whole decide to interpret the news for themselves and, and influence their trading decisions. To conclude the news section for the month of June, I just want to leave you guys with a final message. And with all this news, you know, good and bad, it, it honestly is all going to be bullish for Bitcoin in the long run, simply because it's raising awareness to the fact that our freedoms are so fickle. You know, they're so fragile, they can be taken away so easily. Look at the UK, where banks are now saying you can no longer give money to Binance to trade with, simply because it's for your safety, for your protection. These kind of things are raising awareness and people will begin to realize and understand the need for a decentralized platform, a decentralized society, and that's something that cryptocurrency and Bitcoin in particular can really bring along in the future. All right, guys, with the news out of the way, let's talk about the new family of signal strategies that we've released onto the Proper Farmers dashboard. So the name is CM, CM1 through 15. And what these strategies are doing is they aim to play leverage longs and shorts for quick 2 to 5% moves. And of course, with leverage, that can mean 20 to 50 to 100% moves, depending on how much leverage you're trading with. And this strategy is really designed and aimed towards traders who are already using leverage in the first place. If you're more active, if you're more into looking at the charts, this is more for you. These strategies are designed to trigger during choppy and sideways markets. So one thing you should be aware of, if you do follow these signals, you will most likely find that they're frequently closed early. And that's because choppy price market action leads to more risk. So again, these signals are made to come out during that period of time and we want to be extra cautious with our signals. So when we do expect to see some of them closed early. So everyone, that's it for June's trading signal results, news and profit farmers update video. If you have any feedback, comments, suggestions, and questions, feel free to let us know in the comments below. See you all next time.